Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side, and we welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. We love hearing from you, 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase Longevity products or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the website. You can also click on the Join the Team link if you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. You can be in business for yourself and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Also want to remind you to check out our shopping site at truthnourishment.com. Got enzyme supplements and probiotic supplements, various tinctures and devices, uh, EMF type devices, all at truthnourishment.com, truthnourishment.com. And all our skin health products are all available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the bright side. We have been talking about uh, we're talking about estrogen a lot. <laughs> we're talking about fibromyalgia, pain, inflammation. We said uh, estrogen, far from being the female youth hormone that is marketed as by drug companies and hormone replacement therapy purveyors, bioidentical hormone uh, purvey, uh, hormone replacement purveyors, and there's no such thing as I've said uh, like bioidentical hormone replacement. You cannot be identical to the bio. You can't be identical to biology when it comes to hormones. So you may feel better, and that's great, but you're not doing your body's biochemistry any good if you're on HRT, flat out. The hormones are not supposed to come in from the outside. It, you're playing with fire, especially with estrogen. Progesterone, not as much. Progesterone is pretty benign. It's still a hormone, but pretty benign. DHEA cream, if you're going to use that, or DHEA as a supplement, is pretty benign. But once you start getting into the more sophisticated or more uh, refined, from a biochemical perspective, hormones like estrogen and testosterone, you are playing with fire if, you start, if, you, if you're on an HRT program, particularly with estrogen, whose breakdown products are really potent. Estrogen is a pro-catabolic substance. That means it encourages breakdown at certain concentrations, it's a building hormone at certain concentrations, and it's also a breakdown hormone. It's pro, it's both. That's the problem. When our estrogen breaks down, it becomes very inflammatory. It increases the likelihood of pain syndromes. This is why pain syndromes tend to affect women more than men. There's many kinds of estrogen. That's what makes estrogen so confusing. It's a family. It's a family of compounds that generally up causes up regulation. It revs things up. It's good in a tiny little, tiny amount and at the appropriate time, but you don't want to be revving things up inappropriately in the body. Revving, and when I say things, I mean cells. This is all about the cell. Estrogen revs the cell up. And that includes xenoestrogens. That includes the birth control pill. That includes HRT. That includes any kind of estrogen, estrogenic substance, estrogenic shape, which are found everywhere in nature. Estrogen increases cell activity at the genetic level. It up 
regulates genes. It makes cells divide, makes things grow. It causes the cell to utilize more oxygen. It increases oxygen demand on the cell. By increasing oxygen demand on the cell, it creates a stressor on the cell. That can be good if you're healthy and strong. Most of us aren't healthy and strong. And you don't want to be overdoing this oxygen demand. You don't want to be increasing the oxygen demand on a cell too much. That creates a stress on the cell. And I, you know, stress is a very interesting word. I want to talk a little bit, just for a little bit about stress. Stress is, when we hear this word stress, most of us go into immediate assumptions. So I'm talking to somebody on the phone about a health challenge they, are, they may be dealing with, and I say the word stress immediately. Even on the phone, I can tell that people are immediately going into these assumptions. The first assumption about stress is it's about our jobs or our spouse or, or relationships or kids or bills or all the psychological worries that we linked, link with stress. This stress response in the body, which is a physiologic response, is associated with mental and psychological and emotional kinds of things. So when I say, oh, well, you got, there's some stress going on immediately, I know people are thinking about their psychological stresses or psychological worries. And that's definitely stresses. Those are definitely stressful. I'm not saying they're not stressful, but our bills and our kids and our jobs and our... Uh, Relationships and our psychological worries are only stressful because of their physical effects. The mental and the emotional angst that's linked to our, our uh, psychological problems are really a body issue. If you felt wonderful and blissful in your body every time you thought about your lousy job or relationship or credit card bills, you, they wouldn't be a problem. The only, they're only a problem because they're physiological manifestations. There's physiological correlates to all these emotional and mental kinds of worries and stresses that we have. It's the physiological aspect of stress that is the problem. So when we hear about stress, we think emotion, we think mental, but it's really a physiologic phenomena. It's because the reason emotional mental stresses are so important is because they suppress your immune system. It's because they raise your blood pressure. In the long run, these psychological issues will affect how your hormones work, how we grow, how we repair. There are stresses that are seen to be emotional and mental, but they're really physiologic. We have to link, we have to start thinking of stress as a physiologic phenomena. The word stress is kind of interesting. You know, stress is actually an engineering term. When we, know, when we hear the word stress, what we don't hear is the second word, and that's the strain. Stress is not the problem, it's the strain. The strain is the response. You used to, see, you used to hear people say stress and strain. They don't say that anymore, they just say stress. It's an engineering term that refers to stress, the amount of force that's put on a system, in like a bridge or a building. It's an engineering term. Um, and, and then the strain is the building or the bridge's response to the stress. The body is built so that the response to stresses are actually good. That is an amazing, amazing phenomenon. In fact, that it may be what distinguishes the life force or living entities from non-living entities. A rock, if you put stress on it, it's not going to get. It's not going to be a bigger rock. Can you imagine if you took a rock and you started hammering on it, and it became a bigger, stronger rock? Obviously, that would be you know a miracle, and obviously that's ridiculous. But in the body, that's what happens. And that is actually something that can be taken advantage of. That can be leveraged. The stress response can actually be leveraged. That's what we want to start learning to do is, hand, is work with the strain element, not the stress element, because life has stresses. We want to work on the response to the stress. Now, in the body, from a purely physical perspective, if you put stress, just pure stress on the body, such as eating the wrong food and uh, eating lots of sugar, those are stresses that while the body may be able to adjust to it, there's an immune system, for example, and there's a blood sugar system, there's insulin. Over the course of time, those kind of stressors can overwhelm the system, and those are key. This is where we have control over how our body shows up. By controlling what we put into it that is causing chronic long-term duress, chronic long-term stress. The body likes intense stress. It doesn't like chronic long-term stress. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Don't go away. Anytime. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist. 
Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls in our next segment. You can check out Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, silicon, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatments. You can find them all at truthtreatments.com. Our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream is the most awesome burn cream you will ever use. It's also a great hydrator and moisturizer. And we're actually looking for before and afters. I know a lot of you guys have, have been using our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream for a few years. If you have before and afters, we'll get you a freebie. Get you a free $129 value jar of Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream if you send us a nice before and after that we can use. We're collecting testimonials as well, and we'll get you some freebies if you send us testimonials, you guys who are using Truth Treatments. Uh, if anybody uh, has a nice story, we love hearing those, and we'll make it worth your while if you send an email to support at truthtreatments.com, support at truthtreatments.com with your testimonial and your, also your uh, mailing address. All right, we're talking about this idea of stresses and strains, and really there's a couple, there's just a couple when, when we talk about stress, there's a couple myths or misunderstandings or couple assumptions that we make. One is that stress is psychological, and it is psychological, but it's only important not because of its psychological aspects, but because of what the psychology makes your physiology feel like. I'm in the skincare business, and I'll tell you, I've always thought that there was a relationship between people's psychological stresses and their psoriasis and their acne and, and various skin health issues, and now we have a whole branch of skincare called psychodermatology or psychoimmunodermatology, which is the link between the skin and the immune system and the psychology. So even modern medicine is recognizing this whole mind-body connection and and certainly uh, the the idea that stress can affect the body in a negative sense is not disputed. We know our blood pressure goes up when we have stress. We know that our immune system is suppressed when we go under have a lot of stress. We know our digestive system slows down. So stress number one needs to be regarded as a physiologic phenomena, not psychological, even though there are psychological triggers. The major stresses in the body, from a physical perspective, the things we do, not a psychological perspective, from a physical perspective, are food and sugar, period. Food and sugar lead to dirty blood. Food and sugar, um, over the course of long-term, chronic intake of wrong foods, chronic intake of, of, uh, of sugar, chronic changes in the blood sugar system or fluctuations in the blood, blood sugar system, chronic activation of the immune system at a low level in the blood, these are, the, these are the major stresses in the body that lead to disease. And that makes eating, because blood sugar, obviously, and, and, uh, and wrong foods are parts of eating, eating behavior. This represents a major leverage point for us when it comes to handling our, how our, uh, controlling how our body, the amount of stress our body has to deal with. A second point that needs to be recognized about stress is that it's not always bad. It can be leverage. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. The immune system works better in response to a certain amount of stress. Not long-term chronic stress, but boom, intense stress, like a viral infection. The bone is stronger at the point of the break. Everybody knows about exercise. When the circulation is clogged, new vessels grow. All of these are part of an idea in biology called hormesis, H-O-R-M-E-S-I-S. They can actually inject toxins into your knee to cause an inflammatory response to help your arthritis. That's a classic example of hormesis. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Vegetables are poisonous. Yes, vegetables are poisonous. Now, it's true the amount of poison in a vegetable isn't enough to cause a big time poisonous response for most people, but the slight amount of poison creates, um, causes the liver or stimulates the liver to produce anti-poison. The anti-poison that the liver produces in response to things in broccoli and cauliflower help fight cancer, help turn on uh, the detoxification process or detoxif detoxification machinery. So it helps you clear out estrogen more effectively. So the body has a stress response that is exquisite and can be leveraged. It can be taken advantage of, as in exercise. The so first misunderstanding about stress is that it's a psychological phenomena, or that the problems are psychological, or mental, or emotional. The problems are physiological, even if they're tr triggered by psychology. The second misunderstanding is that it's bad. It's not always bad. You've got hormesis. You've got exercise. 
The body can become stronger when it's under stress. In the world of skin, this is particularly important. The, if you want to keep your skin healthy, if you want to keep your, keep your skin young, if you want to keep your skin anti-age, hit it with some stress periodically. How much, when I say periodically, whether that's four times a week or five times a week or once a week or once every two weeks, it's up to you, you and your skin. You got to figure out where your skin is. But the point I'm making here is stress is your friend when it comes to the skin, just like stress is your friend when it comes to your muscles. Stress is your uh, friend when it comes to muscles because a certain amount of stress will actually make your muscles grow. Same with the skin. But here's the thing about these kinds of stresses. If you're going to leverage stress, what you're really talking about is leveraging the stress response. What you're leveraging is not the stress, you're leveraging the response to the stress. And in order for that response to be effective, you've got to have nutrition. You've got to be healthy. If you just got out of the hospital and you never lifted weights before, you're not going to sit on the bench and start benching 225 pounds. You're going to start with dumbbells, five pounds, if that. Because the stress response requires a certain context. It has, you have to be strong enough to handle the stress response, and you gotta have the raw materials to handle the stress response. In the skin, the st one of the best ways to give the, uh, to exercise the skin, or to put a, put a stressor on the skin so you can get a stress response, is with acid. Acid is very interesting and, very, and also misunderstood. It's a major stressor. It, in fact, we grow in response to acid. Acid at the cell level is not acid. The cell doesn't see any acid. So when you hear about these things like you want your blood to be alkaline and you're too acidic and these are acidic foods and there's a guy who wrote a couple books called The pH Miracle and he sort of understood a little bit about it but not a lot. He's actually in jail now. I don't know if he deserves to be in jail but in any case, um, there's misunderstandings around this idea of acid. Acid is to a cell protons, little charges. Acid is electricity. We call it acid, but really at the fundamental level, it's electrical energy. If you just put acid into the skin or acid into cells, you're going to burn those cells out. Cells work really hard in response to acid or protons. Don't be thrown off by that word protons. All that is is a little piece of acid. Not really, but that's close enough for our intents and purposes here. Think of it like a little piece of acid. The, the cell absorbs these little pieces of acid. By the way, these little pieces of acid can actually come in through pumps. They call them proton pumps. And by inhibiting these proton pumps, you can stop cells from doing things. If it's a stomach cell, you can stop a stomach cell from secreting hydrochloric acid into the stomach by blocking protons. That's what a proton pump inhibitor is, PPI, Nexium. That's the classic proton pump inhibitor. Protons rev things up. Little pieces of acid rev things up. Now, that is a good thing or a bad thing. It's a bad thing if you don't have the wherewithal to handle all that revving up. It's a good thing if you do. So what do you need to handle all that revving up? Very interesting question. You're going to take advantage of protons, whether you're lactic acid from lifting weights or, or, uh, or uh, glycolic acid on your skin for, for, for stimulating the production of collagen. You've got to have something else following that proton. I'll tell you what that is when I come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also find uh, blog posts, news stories at brightsideben.com, videos at uh, criticalhealthnews.com, which we're constantly updating, as well as uh, pharmacistben.com. And a join the team now link that you can click on at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Also, uh, if you are in the Colorado area, in the Longmont, Colorado area, I should say, and uh, you'll be around this Saturday, come to the Journey Church, 2000 Pike Road, Unit A, Longmont, 80501 at 10 a.m., Tom Schnault and his group will be doing a Super Saturday, and there's all kinds of interesting and entertaining speakers, including myself. Uh, I always learn new things at these Super Saturday events. Tom puts on a great show. He's like, kind of like an MC, and the Super Saturdays are kind of like an entertainment show. It's kind of like you're at the 
watching a uh, talk show. We got all kinds of different speakers, and it's just a fun time and great, great information. That's one of the neatest things about longevity is there's all kinds of great information, personal development information, sales information, and of course health and nutrition information. So if you are in the Longmont area, in the Colorado area, this uh, this Saturday. Uh, 10 a.m. at the Journey Church, 2000 Pike Road, Unit A, Longmont 80501. Myself and a whole bunch of other folks will be uh, doing a Super Saturday with Tom Shaw. 10 a.m. this Saturday, and uh, that will be August the 17th. August the 17th, 2019. August the 17th, too, if you guys are listening in the, in the distant future. August the 17th, 2019. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a second. Uh, from the British Medical Journal, Fried Foods and Cardiovascular Disease, the association between consumption of fried foods and mortality due to cardiovascular disease was examined in a study of 106,966 postmenopausal women aged 50 to 79. And guess what? Consumption of fried chicken at least once a week as compared with no consumption was associated with a significant 12% increase in cardiovascular mortality. Now, I'm not going to say fried chicken causes heart disease, and I don't like these kinds of studies, but the point is well taken. When you heat oils and when you heat proteins, you call, create nasty compounds. In the case of uh, proteins, you get substances called HCAs, heterocyclic amines, when you heat protein up at high concentration. When you heat uh, sugars up, you get glycating agents, and when you heat fats, you get oxidized, uh, you get oxidized uh, uh, fatty acids and oxidized cholesterol. None of this stuff is good. Fried chicken is not a healthy food, period. I'm not saying, and by the way, nobody really likes fried chicken. You like oily fried chicken. You like the oil. We like the grease. If fried chicken didn't have a lot of grease and a lot of salt, we probably wouldn't like it very much. And if, if steak didn't have a lot of grease, you wouldn't like it either. It's the grease and the salt we're looking for. We're looking for fat. We're looking for salt. What you want to do if you're addicted to French fries and fried chicken and these kinds of foods is give yourself some good quality fat. Coconut oil, butter, ghee, eggs, fatty fish. Good quality fat is incredibly satisfying. And when you have good quality fat, you don't want to eat the crappy fat. So you don't want to just like force yourself not to eat French fries. That's very difficult to do if your body needs fat. And if it needs salt and fat, there's no way you're going to resist French fries. So do a teaspoon, or uh, not a teaspoon, maybe a quarter teaspoon of Celtic sea salt in water. Don't drink the whole glass of water. Put a, take a glass of water, put a quarter teaspoon of Celtic sea salt in there, and sip on it. First thing in the morning. Or when you're under duress. Or if you're constantly under duress, just do it in the middle of the day sometime, and you'll know you, it's good for you because you're going to love the taste of it. You're going to know it's going to be way more satisfying than an ordinary beverage if you're salt depleted, and then somebody puts some french fries in front of you, it's not going to look good. And if somebody puts some oil, if you eat some good fat, if you eat some good butter, and somebody puts some oil in front of you, you're not going to—that's not going to look good either. If you guzzle about four tablespoons of Udo's blend out of the bottle, and they put a plate of your favorite fried food in front of you, you're not going to want to eat it. And that's what you're looking for. You don't want a cold turkey, or withdraw, force yourself not to have things like salt and oil. You need to have the high energy that comes from oil. It has to be a stable oil. That's the problem with oils. They're not stable. And I know no vegetable. I, I, don't want to, no, I don't want to get here any crap from anybody about, oh, well, what about Dr. Wallach saying no oils and blah, blah, blah. I don't happen to think that. I happen to think that you need to have a little bit of oil, but it has to be a good oil, a stable oil, and Doc is 100% correct, and other people are 100% correct when they say you got to be careful with these oils. They say no oils. They say that they create oxidized, pro oxidized particles, and it's true. You have to use your oil fresh, and it has to be stable, and it has to be kept in a cold uh, space if it's not stable, and you definitely don't want to heat it. Salt is the same thing. You know, you don't table salt, the kind Morton's, the, you know, if it rains, it pours with the little girl on there. That's not what I'm talking about when I say salt. I'm talking about Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt, some salt with all the minerals. It's very, very important for health, particularly for the health, for, for the stress response. The uh, salt is part of the stress response. The body will hold on to salt and it will excrete salt at a different rate depending on the amount of stresses that you have. You will run out of salt if you have a lot of stress. And that's where salt cravings come from. It's because we're under a lot of stress, under a lot of duress. All right, let me do one more here. We'll get your calls, 844-236-6010. 
This is from the Journal of the American Heart Association. Can a aortic aneurysms, aortic aneurysms, and by the way, not just aortic aneurysms, can, and can aortic aneurysms and heart disease be prevented with diet? An aortic aneurysm is a, a bulge that occurs in a, in the aorta, which is a major blood vessel that carries blood from the heart to the body. You can have a, this bulge when the connective tissue starts to deteriorate. And the question was asked, can aortic aneurysms be prevented uh, with diet? From the, in the Journal of the American Medical Association, dietary intake was assessed by a 66-item food frequency questionnaire uh, in 1987 and again in 1993 in 13,000 individuals. And uh, it turns out that individuals with a diet, with a high dietary approach to stop hypertension, but who ate a good diet, had a 40% lower risk of hospitalization for abdominal aortic aneurysms. That's an aneurysm that occurs in the abdominal aorta. Higher consumption of uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, blah, 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 uh, was each significantly associated with a lower risk of abdominal aortic aneurysm. Again, I don't, I'm not a big believer in these kinds of studies, but the point is well taken. There is, there are things you can do with your foods and with your diet, for better or worse, that will affect your cardiac and circulatory health. Make no mistake about it. Why is that important? Well, it's the leading cause of death, and probably the most expensive of all our healthcare expenditures are around heart and circulatory diseases. If we could even put a slight dent into the uh, uh, hundreds of millions, literally hundreds of millions of people who are dealing with either uh, heart disease or cardiovascular disease of some kind or circulatory diseases, and that includes uh, diabetes and blood sugar problems, we could go a long, long way towards improving our longevity and blocking this drop in longevity that has occurred over the last, uh, well, probably over the last uh, generation, but at an accelerated pace over the last four or five years. Life expectancy has dropped three years in a row now here in the United States. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to, well, let's take a quick commercial break, and then we'll go to Rhea in Japan, and we'll take your phone calls at 844-236-6010. Hang on. If you're on hold, we'll get to you right after this break. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. side 844-236-6010 is our number got lots of lines open for you let's go to japan and say good morning to ria what's up ria hi Barbara. hello good ria how are you i'm doing good you got lots of time here so what's going on nobody else is nobody else wants to oh, talk this today so it's all you um can i just go ahead with the question then yeah yeah go ahead okay so uh, I'm treating myself as though I have leaky gut syndrome because I still have a lot of hair fall and, like, ridges in my nails that you said okay. might be from, like, smell absorption and how stuff. Do you, how do you feel, so Rhea? How do you feel? I feel much better, like, taking a lot of the supplements that you recommended. I, I feel like I have a lot more energy, but I still get sleepy during the day and stuff like that. But I, okay. I am much better, but I think I could still get better. Okay. And I'm still bothered by the hair fall and the nails. They're just, I, I wish they would get better. <laughs> so I, I'm suspecting that that's from leaky gut. Okay. I really don't know, but that's what I think. And at the moment, I'm taking all, a bunch of supplements that you recommend, all the basics I think that you probably would recommend, like the ones that you recommend on the show. And besides that, I'm on the keto diet, and I fast two times a week. And by fasting, I mean I'm on the liquid bone broth fast for two times a week. So I have about a one liter of bone broth. And that's uh, I, you, and I'm, You're cutting out there a little bit. Say that, that again. That. Rhea, I just lost you. Say that again now. The uh, last sentence about bone broth. Okay. So I have one liter of bone broth. Uh-huh. I I fast one whole day, and I do okay. that twice a week. So tell me, I hear, I got your program. So what, what are you asking me exactly? Okay. So my question is, when I'm doing the bone broth fasting, how do I take my supplements? Like, do I stop taking the probiotics or and the enzymes and everything, or do I... When you're fasting, you mean? So it's like... 
yes. when you're, well, let's talk about fasting then. Okay, so what's the idea of fasting? A couple things. First of all, the main idea of fasting is you're, you're, you're stopping the stream of toxicity that's getting into your body. That's the main idea of fasting. Mm -hmm. The second idea of fasting is you're allowing the body to do what's called autophagy. Autophagy is when mm -hmm. there's not a lot of stuff for the body to do or to process. It'll start to clear itself mm -hmm. out of, uh, it'll start to clear dead cells and inflammation and all the muck that's in the bloodstream and in the tissues out of the system. It'll start to work on cleaning mm -hmm. rather than processing. So none of that's going to be affected yeah. by supplements. You know, you can take vitamin C okay. and, and beyond tangy tangerine, essential fatty acids. They're not a stream. Of, they don't have anything to do with the stream of toxicity that's coming into the body. And they're not going to slow down autophagy. So you're not going to really disrupt your fast with things like the beyond tangy tangerine or the ultimate EFAs. Nonetheless, sometimes these nutrients mm -hmm. require digestive juices to be maximally absorbed. And if you don't have those digestive juices because you haven't, you're not eating anything, uh, you might not get maximum absorption or maximum benefit for the supplements. So it could go either way. It's not the end of the world if you took day, a day off from your supplements. On the other hand, it's not really going to interrupt, interfere with the fast if you do take the supplements. You may not get the benefit, the maximum right. benefit from everything, but it's not going to. You're still going to get the benefits of the fast even if you take your supplements. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. And my main question was with probiotics. Like when I do the fast, will the probiotics affect me? Like um, have a better effect? Oh no, God, that, can, that has to do, to... that's a good question. And that you're basically asking the probiotics with food or without food. It depends on the brand. Mm -hmm. And there's really no probiotics are the great unknown of nutritional supplementation because with most nutritional supplements, you're dealing with molecules. With probiotics, you're dealing with living cells. Do you get that? A probiotic so is a living. Maybe it's sort of simplistic, maybe it's simplistic thinking, but I was thinking that if like my body and my intestines are pretty clear when I'm fasting, if I put probiotics and populate my intestines yeah, on an empty stomach, that would be better. That may be. It depends on the brand. The brands, the, the probiotic strains are all different in the different brands. The proportions are all different in the different brands. How they grow the bacteria are all different. It's, there's a lot of mystery around it. Not a lot of people know about it. It's best to go by the brand's suggestion to you, uh, on their directions. Whatever brand. What are you using? What brand? I'm using, uh, I started a new brand called Hyperbiotic. It's a time-release probiotic. Okay, now if it's time to release, I'm not sure how that impacts. They'll, they're going to tell you on the directions whether you want to use it with food. They're going to tell you the directions. Now, um, Nightly it, Essence, I believe they tell you to use it. with food. Say again? It doesn't say, say to take with food. It doesn't say to take on an empty stomach or either way, or it says take on no, an empty stomach? either way. What is it's it? just one time a day. But that's okay, all well, there you go. Then, then that's what you want. I mean, that's, uh, then, then that's how you want to, you know, it doesn't matter. I can't tell you the answer to the question. They know the answer to the question about their brand more than I do. So if they say it doesn't matter, it okay. doesn't matter. That's basically the, okay. the uh, you know, that's what you want to go by is the particular brand's advice. Okay. Now, uh, And I have one more. Okay. For the nightly essence, for folks who are taking the nightly essence, the nightly essence, I'm pretty sure they taste, tell you to take it with food. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. What were you going right. to ask me? And I have one more question. Yeah. Um, you have told us that we should be taking our vitamin Bs with, with all the Bs. Like yeah, you don't want to take one B. You don't want to take one B without all the Bs. That's correct. Okay. In that case, if I were to take like a complete bee food, like a like eggs, if I were to eat like two eggs and then yeah, like, and then take uh, a take a B three with the eggs or something, sense? yeah, that would be the same idea. Yeah, I, yeah oh, that so would be the same. Okay. Except the thing is, I, the thing, my hair, so. well, the thing is, you're not going to if you take say niacin, like a hundred milligrams of niacin or two hundred milligrams of niacin. You may not get enough of all the B vitamins in the eggs. There's only trace amounts of the B vitamins in foods compared to the amount you're getting in the dose. So, again, there's no real – I can't tell you the answer to that. It may be enough. It may not be enough. Personally, I wouldn't mess around. I would just mm -hmm. take a supplement or, or, or take enough B vitamins. They're excreted, so you can't really overdose on it. I wouldn't count on the eggs personally. But, yes, your point okay. is well taken. Right. The eggs do have a – foods can have a full spectrum of Bs like eggs and liver and such. But I wouldn't be messing around. I would be taking okay. them with uh, – Okay. All right, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Let's. Uh, thank you. Go. Thank you. Take care. Melody just jumped on here. I want to see what our friend Melody has to say. Bum, bum, bum. Are you there, Melody? Hi. Uh, Good morning. Hey, Melody. What's going on? 
Hey, I had a question regarding your alpha hydroxy acid product, which is amazing. Our energizing exfoliator. Time. You know, I forgot ah. to say, I forgot to tell you guys about the protons and the electrons. After protons, you want to put in electrons in the body. I forgot to say that before into break, but that reminds me what you just said. Acid is protons, positive charges. After you put the acid on your skin, you want to follow it up with electrons. After you put acid in your body or, or stimulate acid production in your body by going to the gym, you want to come home and do electrons. Electrons in terms of food and supplements. Food and supplements provide us with electrons. In, your, uh, in my energizing exfoliator, I put electrons in the form of uh, minerals. So you get the positive charges from the acid and the um, electrons provide the negative charges and the two together create lightning. That's what lightning is, is uh, positive charges plus negative charges. I, I, I'm sorry to digress there. What were you going to ask me, Melody? No, no <laughs> I just wanted to know what, that's exciting. <laughs> is that good um, stuff? I Protons wanted, and electrons, not yes. too much information? No, no, I love it. Um, I'm going to talk more about it tomorrow. Home. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. What were you going to ask me, though, because we're going to run out of time here in a few, a few What's seconds. What's the best protocol for using to maximize your product? for using everything. I can yeah, use wash a retinol your like every day if I wanted to, but what's Are the Are you? Best? You're not using retinol every I day. I mean, I could. I could, but I Well, don't. you want to take the days off because the stressors, the retinol right. functions as a stressor in addition to providing vitamins, vitamin A and C. Uh, it functions as a stressor. So you want to take days off between stressors. You don't want to go to the gym every day and work your arms every day. You're going to overtrain. You've got to work your arms every third day. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the gym, you work mm -hmm. body parts at different times because uh, different days because the rest period is important. So leveraging the rest period is important. I'll talk more about it tomorrow. Um, so the best thing you do is wash your face with um, our peppermint salicylic cleanser. Then use your uh, once every three or four days or once every two to four days, we'll say, your energizing exfoliator. And then follow it up with the trifecta, which is three products, our Biomimetic Mineral Mist, our Truth Transdermal C Serum, and our Truth Hyaluronic Mineral Hydrator. You'll notice an immediate plumping, and then in the long term, you'll just have dramatic changes in the quality and texture of your skin. At night, I would use the Truth Balm, just the Truth Transdermal C Balm. And then once every few days, depending on your skin and depending on the strength, retinol, Truth Retinol 1% gel every few days, Truth Retinol 5% gel maybe every 7 to 10 days. My suggestion, my okay. recommendation, but I know a lot of you guys have, your, have been working with the Truth products on your own, and you have your own takes on it. And how it works, I'm just giving you a general idea, Melody, how it works for you specifically is something you're going to have to kind of play with yourself. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And I'm sorry if we left you on hold. Call back tomorrow. We'll get you first up. I am Pharmacist Ben. Check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, truthnourishment.com for our shopping products, nutritional supplements, powders, and enzymes. Thank you, Robert, for setting that up. And truthtreatments.com for truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.